I am currently at the International Bomber Command Centre in Lincolnshire, which opened on the 12th of April 2018. In 2011, the then Lord Lieutenant of Lincolnshire, Tony Worth CVO, formed a trust to realise the dream of building a memorial that commemorated not only the bravery and sacrifice of those who served and supported Bomber Command, but also to officially recognise the significant contribution of Lincolnshire to the outcome of World War II. Sadly, Tony Worth died after a brief battle with cancer in November 2017, just seven weeks before the opening of the centre to the public, and so never saw his dream realised. The IBCC has had funding from private donations and the support of funding bodies such as the Heritage Lottery Fund, Bifra Awards, FCC Environment and LIBOR. Spire actually arrived in 2015 in two parts um, and it was quite a, a nerve-wracking erection. All in all, it weighs 58 tonne above ground and 13 tonne below ground. Um, it came from Leeds, where it was made. It's made of a Corson steel alloy. It's meant to look rusty. It's actually a protective coat that forms naturally over this particular type of steel. It has a 125 year warranty without maintenance or guarantee without maintenance. Now, the design itself has been designed to look rather like an aircraft wing. The height of it is 102 foot, that's actually the same as a wingspan of Lancaster from, from one tip of the wing to the other. If you measured the longest part of the base here, that's the same as 16 foot, I believe. The same width as when the wing hits the fuselage. The holes in the side going up, they're made to look like lightning holes. What the inside of a, an aircraft wing would look like, uh, because if it was all solid steel it, or, or metal, it would be too heavy and wouldn't fly. So they put holes in it to keep the integrity, but to reduce the weight. For, for many people, it is reminiscent of a church spire, which is particularly poignant um, here in Lincoln Cathedral. Is often a feature you, you hear airmen talk about in their oral biographies and um, how much it meant to them when they saw it. Returning from ops, uh, from long operations, they knew once they saw Lincoln Cathedral that they're almost home. It's almost time for the bacon and eggs and, and a sleep. And they're almost safe, really. Uh, so it does look a bit like a church tower. And actually, from the spire itself, you can see all over Lincoln and the cathedral. The Ribbon of Remembrance started uh, as, I mean, a place for us to raise funds, really. Uh, without any government support, um, we are still in quite a lot of debt. Anyone uh, can have his own laid in the Ribbon of Remembrance. It doesn't need to be uh, an ex-serviceman or ex-military. And if you look down the ribbon, there are all sorts of stones laid for all sorts of people. We have a stone for Robert Bostek. Antis. Antis was actually a dog who was awarded the Dickens Medal for Bravery in, in World War II and Robert was a, an airman from Czechoslovakia and he had been, he ended up in no man's land in France and him and his fellow crew member went to go and seek refuge in a, an empty farmhouse and they heard this whimpering and in the corner huddled, you know, was this scared little puppy. Robert gave it some chocolate. He didn't know chocolate was bad for dogs back then. And him and Antis became firm friends. He, uh, Robert and Antis travelled to Gibraltar where they smuggled aboard a ship and came back to England. Well, Antis was smuggled aboard because animals weren't meant to be aboard. But it turned out that there was something like a pig, a parrot, 20 dogs and a couple of chickens. Something along those lines that had been smuggled aboard as well. Antis stayed with Robert. He joined Bomber Command, the RAF, eventually. Antis used to sneak aboard. Or well, one day he snuck aboard uh, the flight or the operation. Robert, halfway to bed, got into the air. He felt a wet nose on his arm 
and he looked down and there he was, little Antis, and they shared the oxygen mask. The, I believe Antis even had an oxygen mask made for him after that, until he got banned from flying. We had lots of adventures, but Antis um, rescued people from uh, rubble from a bombed building in Liverpool. He dug them out and located them, and that's why he was awarded the Dickens Medal, which is the animal uh, medal for brain. We were really lucky during lockdown and we managed to secure funding to keep the centre open really. We also managed to secure funding for our new Dig for Victory garden. During uh, World War II, this very site um, that we're standing on was a uh, vegetable, used to grow vegetables, it was people's allotments. So it seems quite fitting uh, that we, we put a Dig for Victory garden here. We're growing all sorts in there, lots of edible flowers, lots of courgettes, peppers, beans, uh, beetroot. Um, with the produce that we grow here, we then put back into our hub cafe and for formal dining events. This is also one of our newest additions uh, to the grounds. This is an Anderson Shelter built to government specifications from, from World War II. Uh, believe it or not, they were built to accommodate six people. They have now, this one has now become a, a feature of our school trips and we can fit six children in there, just about comfortably. I can't imagine what it would be like with six adults in there, to be completely honest. Uh, spending all night listening to the aircraft go over hoping and praying that the house is still standing uh, after the uh, all clearings. And um, for us it's really important to uh, make the story of Bomber Command as accessible to as many people as humanly possible um, because that's the only way that the story will live on really and what these guys went through. Um, we love having children here. I hold regular object handling sessions at the weekend. We have kids events on um, on a day-to-day -day basis. There is dressing up in the foyer area. We have kids trails outside in the gardens with challenges and prizes and we've got a brand new electronic trail as well um, but you can use your smartphone to travel around the exhibition and um, you have your own personal gremlin tour guide called Gus who uh, gives you a bit of an audio tour and there's games um, to do and a little bit more information and some fun facts. Apart from obviously making children feel welcome, we also um, know how important it is to make sure that the grounds are as accessible to, to as many people as possible. All of the, the pathways around the gardens are wheelchair friendly. Um, we have, it's all on one level on the inside and there's two lifts for each side of the exhibition. We have disabled toilets or blue badge toilets um, are on all of the floors. And recently we've um, installed a new changing places, changing room um, downstairs as well. On top of that, we've got ample disabled parking. Um, you can drop off right outside the front door. Wheelchairs are available to be booked, but you know what, we've got enough if you just want to rock up and, <laughs> and ask for a wheelchair. Um, we've got hearing loops, um, accessible font text for the, for the exhibition. We really try our hardest to accommodate everybody. So if there's anything that you feel that we need and we don't have, please just ask when you're here. So why not head on down to the IBCC? The IBCC is located 2.6 miles south of the centre of Lincoln and is close to the village of Carmwick 
and Bradsleep Heath. A big massive thank you to Jess and everyone here at the IBCC for all their time and their efforts put in towards this video. I wouldn't have done it without them. Thank you very much. Don't forget to check out the links down below for more information on the IBCC. Till next time.